It is never a dull day in WWE, folks. It's never a dull day when you're working for Vincent Kennedy McMahon. <clears throat> Take two. Take two. Vincent Kennedy, no plan. McMahon, there you go. It's a little bit better. WWE, Vince McMahon and people in upper management held their quarterly conference calls with investors, the dummies, that have invested money into this dying product that we see on Monday and Friday night. They ask questions. They don't get the proper answers. It's comedy hour. It's comedy hour when Vince McMahon is addressing investors of World Wrestling Entertainment. Folks, during this call this week, Vince McMahon stated that WWE will be writing and producing better shows on Monday and Friday night to combat declining ratings. Now, I am no rocket scientist. I don't have a 4.0 GPA. I am not a mathematician. I am not a creative writer in WWE, even though I should be because the shows would be better in my hands if it was. Logic, Bruce. Logic. Something that you don't possess. Folks, I got one question, and I don't know why this one question wasn't raised. If WWE really wanted to do that, don't you think it would have already been done on Monday and Friday night? I don't understand you people. I don't understand you people. We're going to go over it, and I'm probably going to rant. So you don't want to miss my rant on this particular topic. We'll go over everything that Vince McMahon said in that conference call with investors. If it's not broken... Don't fix it. That's the saying, right? That's the age old saying. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Then I would love to know why they changed Matt Riddle's name. Yes, I'm not trolling you. WWE woke up on Thursday and decided that everything wrong in WWE can take a backseat. This needs to be addressed. They took Matt out of Matt Riddle. Vince, Bruce, and everybody in charge, why don't you just go and do it? Why don't you just go a step further and just add the extra R at the end of Riddle so we can finally call him the Riddler on Monday Night Raw? I call this. I call this, man. I wish I was this good playing the goddamn lottery. Unbelievable, man. I don't know whether to laugh, whether to cry, whether to scream my head off. I don't know. I don't know. And WWE finally seized control of everybody's Twitch channels. Mass closures of Twitch channels in WWE from Paige to Styles to Black to Zelina Vega to Mia Yim, Cesaro, Xavier Woods, and everybody in between. We will go over the entire story, man. It's Saturday night. Grab your cold beverage and watch the best in the business in the IWC do it right here for episode 348. Of Off The Scripts. What is going on, guys? Thank you so very much for joining me right here on Off The Script. In fact, it's actually episode 349 for your October 31st. <laughs> Halloween episode of OTS, man. Listen, man, I could play a great villain. I can play a great villain. I just need to be given the right role. Seriously. Hopefully you guys have a great Halloween. We got a great show lined up for you, man. We got a lot of stuff to go over. We're going to break down Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW. We're going to do it all. We got some major stories. There's going to be ranting. I'm going to make you guys laugh. It's going to be a great, great episode of Off The Script this weekend. And then to cap it off tomorrow, we are going to dive into why the Survivor Series just isn't the same anymore and what WWE can do in the current climate of WWE television, with the draft, with the brand split, with each roster being individualized, separate from one another. Why has Survivor Series fallen from 
grace. We're going to go over exactly what WWE can do to remedy this and why NXT has been excluded from the 2020 version of the Survivor Series, man. Thank you guys so very much for joining me on episode 349, sponsored by The Ridge, Ridge ridge.com slash script. You guys can use code script at checkout. Unbelievable, man. Ridge just released an 18K gold Ridge wallet. When I thought I had enough wallets, man, Ridge comes back and blows everybody away with the 18K gold. You guys can actually save on that wallet and everything else by using code SCRIPT at checkout, ridge.com slash script. Follow me on social media, man, at JD from NY206. Very easy to reach out to me there. Obviously, you guys can tweet along with me on Monday, on Wednesday, on Friday, during all the shows. Make sure you guys go and follow me there. We are almost at 100 and 20,000 subscribers on YouTube, and 31,000 subscribers, followers on Twitter, man. Unbelievable stuff there. So thank you guys for always showing the support. Like I said, Twitter, YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We are on our way to 120,000 subscribers, man. Thank you guys so much for the love and support all week, every single week on what I do here. Make sure you guys... Hit that thumbs up and turn on that bell so you are notified of everything that I do right here on the channel. If you missed anything that I've uploaded during the week, man, lots of stuff. We got Monday Night Raw, terrible show as always. AEW Dynamite, we talk about the big story of Thunder Rosa possibly going to WWE on top of everything that happened on what I thought was a great Dynamite show. We will be talking about that NXT show, that Halloween Havoc show that we had on Wednesday night. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. So if everybody was wondering what my opinion was on Halloween Havoc presented by NXT, we will talk about it in this show today on OTS. AEW, Monday Night Raw, Friday Night SmackDown. As of last night, we got Roman Reigns and Jay Uso, the Usos, and that storyline continuing to develop on SmackDown on Friday Night. Where it goes, what WWE does with Roman Reigns after the Survivor Series, I don't know. I don't know, Big E, Daniel Bryan, Rey Mysterio, Kevin Owens. There is no shortage of opponents for Roman Reigns on Friday night, but who will the one lucky man be in March at WrestleMania? Will it be Daniel Bryan? Will it be Big E? Or will it be Dwayne Johnson? Will it be The Rock? I don't know. I don't know, but they're doing an unbelievable job with Roman Reigns on Friday night. If you missed any of that stuff, guys, links for everything are down in the description of this very video. Thank you guys so very much for all that. Great way to support the show. Multitude of ways you could do that. Number one, Patreon. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Man, we are getting very close to unleashing a brand new Patreon subscription service, man. Tears will be introduced, finally done the right way. I got some great stuff you guys are going to be able to get your hands on. And by great, I mean exclusive stuff. It will not be on sale anywhere. It will not be on sale on Bonfire. It will not be on sale anywhere. Only Patreon, because I have everything in my possession. You guys are going to love it, man. So I can't wait to unleash that stuff to you all on Patreon. So make sure you guys keep an eye and an ear out. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. If you guys want to go and get your masks, mouthmasker.com, mouthmasker.com slash OTS. Go and get your black off the script masks now in stock. If you guys want to go and get a t-shirt, bonfire.com is the home of off the script, bonfire.com. Link is down in the description of this very video. And as always, the ridge, ridge ridge.com slash script. You guys can use code script at checkout. I don't even know where to start here, man. I, uh, I really don't even know where to start. I might as well start with the conference call because it's comedy hour. It is comedy hour in WWE. Vince McMahon says WWE is working on better writing for their TV shows. Folks, if WWE is working on better writing, then they, then they need to execute moves. They need to execute maneuvers and actually working on a way to get that to happen. And the only way that that can happen is by one of two things. One, 
Vince McMahon completely removes himself from the creative aspect of WWE, which we know is not going to happen. We know that's not going to happen. Or something that could happen that I think needs to happen is get rid of that yes man. That yes man. So angry when I fucking hear his name, I spit everywhere. That goddamn yes man, that motherfucker, that cocksucker. Bruce Pritchard. He's got to go. Bruce Pritchard has to go, man. I am tired of these proverbial yes men up Vince McMahon's asshole. I really am tired of it. He offers nothing new. He's a petty motherfucker. He doesn't combat Vince on anything. All he does is yes, 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 yes. Even when he probably knows something, A, doesn't make sense, or B, is wrong. And then he doesn't have an idea of fresh new talent. He doesn't have ideas for the future. Ain't I right, Bruce? Ain't I right? You know I am. You fucking wobbly, walrus, red-faced, fucking apple-looking motherfucker. I know I'm right. During WWE's investor conference call, oh, it's going to be a show, folks. It's going to be a show. Vince McMahon addressed the declining ratings. McMahon said that they are not hanging their hat on ratings alone because people are watching WWE programming through other platforms. He says, and I quote, we're doing everything we can, better writing and better execution. Sure. Sure. I'm going to stop you right there, folks, because I got a story right here, man. Listen to this one. Listen to this one. Vince McMahon, let me repeat that if you guys did not hear it. Vince McMahon says, we're doing everything we can Better writing and better execution, okay? That's what he said to investors. That's what he said to these dummies that are investing money into the WWE product. Then, I could have easily talked about this on last night's live stream when I did SmackDown in the post show, but I saved it for this because it makes a little bit more sense in this context. The SmackDown script on Friday morning On Friday morning before SmackDown, the SmackDown script was in jeopardy because Vince McMahon won't sign off on any ideas. Now, Ringside News is reporting this. And as of Friday morning, planning for SmackDown this week was going terribly. They didn't have much of anything approved by Vince McMahon, which is why before the show actually took place live on the USA Network, They had not announced anything in the early afternoon for what was a Friday Night SmackDown episode back on Fox after a terrible rating on FS1 in which WWE was preempted because of the World Series. Now, it's not an issue of plans changing. It's not an issue of plans changing. A tenured member of the writing team explained to Ringside News that they just can't get solid sign-off on the ideas proposed for the show. Even the ideas Vince himself came up with, he just won't finalize it. End quote. Now, WWE on Friday morning, this was reported around 8 a.m., 9 a.m., WWE had 12 hours before they went live on Fox for SmackDown. So when you go back and you listen to Vince McMahon talk to the investors, now I know the investors are not on the dirt sheets. I know they don't give a shit about anything creatively. Hopefully one of these days they do wake up and see that that is a big proponent of why WWE is not where they should be financially as far as stocks. But he says we're doing everything we can, better writing and better execution. Vince, are you really doing everything that you can for the shows, when you got 60 fucking writers waiting for a goddamn CEO of the company, you, to sign off on the ideas that they have proposed on the show, even the ideas that you yourself put into the show so that they can get the script back and start telling everybody what exactly is going on. 
So I'd love to know where you're doing everything that you possibly can. Then he says, better writing and better execution. Better writing. Have you watched Monday Night Raw? Better writing even after the draft. Nothing makes sense. And better execution. Bro, if you think that's execution done right, I don't know what the hell you are smoking, bro. I really don't. In fact, I'd love some because maybe it would calm me down when I watch your terrible programming. Now, this is not the first time that this has been said. So it remains to be seen if any real improvements are made to the show. Folks, I'll give you a clue. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't do hocus pocus. I don't know Harry Potter. I'll give you a clue. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Real improvements made to the show. Bro, Jesus Christ could descend down from heaven and write this show. And not even him. He wouldn't be able to resuscitate a dying product that's been dying for years now. That's how bad it is. Everyone in WWE knows that better writing is not going to fix the issues at hand. I mean, there are a multitude of issues. It's not just the writing. So even if there is better writing, it's not going to fix everything about these shows. However, there are some bright spots in the company. Roman Reigns, Jey Uso, and the whole Samoan thing going on with him, head of the household, tribal chief, fantastic. But even if you go back to that, it's not even being written by Vince McMahon. It's not even being written by Vince McMahon. Bruce has nothing to do with it. So what's the problem? What's the problem? The one storyline that we all universally love right now and has our biggest interest is something that hasn't to do with Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard. Go figure. Go figure. Sasha Banks and Bailey, that's been well received. I'm pretty sure the majority of the ideas and the structure of everything is being planned out by Mercedes and Pamela. How much of that is Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchett? Probably very little. Probably very little. Those storylines, the performers have been given a lot of creative input. Away from Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchett. So that's that. Folks, at the end of the day, it's comedy hour. Vince McMahon is promising better writing on their television shows. But I said it in the outset. If this was WWE's mentality and they really meant that and they felt it and they really did mean all of this to investors and they know that it needs to be changed, wouldn't it have been done already? Wouldn't we have seen better writing on these shows already? So why is it that things still don't make sense and the shows have very little effort put into them? And if you are saying, well, JD, how do you know that, man? You got to give everything time. Motherfucker, I've been giving this company years to get things right. And they still, at every twist and turn, fail. Fail. I'm not giving anything any time. Their time is up. Their little Timex is broken. Done. Get better. Get better. I want better writing. I want things to make sense. You got the best roster in the history of this company and you failed to produce quality television that is interesting to the people watching. Other key notes from this conference call. There will be a multi-part documentary on Vince McMahon on Netflix with Bill Simmons as the executive producer. Bill Simmons actually works on the 30 for 30 series on ESPN. Those are always incredible. And then he actually worked on the Andre the Giant documentary that we seen on HBO. Again, that was incredible. So if this is in similar quality to those, we could be looking at a great documentary on Vince McMahon. How much of this does Vince McMahon have hands on with? I don't know. Are they going to go over all the nefarious shit that Vince McMahon has done to really make it juicy and entertaining? Probably not. It's probably going to be a glorification of Vince McMahon in the most godlike form. So it should be interesting, but will it dive deep into who Vince McMahon is? And by who, I mean dirty, nasty, downright cutthroat businessman. I don't give a fuck about anybody but myself, Vince McMahon. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Will we see that? Probably not. 
WWE is looking at options to expand the WWE Network. Earlier this year, Vince McMahon said that they were close on a deal. Nick Khan, no relation to Tony, says that they are looking for licensing opportunities with the network and there is constant dialogue with domestic and global partners. WWE is partnering with Sony India to hold an event there in 2021 with plans to develop Indian stars. Great. Great. WWE going to India next year to hold an event. Good luck. Good luck. In regards to the move away from the Thunderdome, Chief Financial Officer Christina Salen says there will be some kind of center for the foreseeable future. Some kind of center for the foreseeable future. Uh, So what that means is that WWE is moving back into the Capital Wrestling Center for next year. Is that what I'm understanding? Because WWE is in a position right now where their contract is coming up and the Thunderdome is running out. WWE obviously wants fans. WWE obviously wants to get out of Florida and start touring again and get into different venues. But with everything closing down again and all these restrictions being put in place all over the United States and lockdowns happening everywhere again for two weeks, six weeks, however many weeks, do you honestly think it's in WWE's best interest to move out of Florida? I don't think that is the case whatsoever. WWE better extend that And I don't even know if they will be able to extend that because as we get into the new year, there will be sports leagues starting up again. The NBA is going to start their season again. Clearly, the Miami uh, Heat, or not not the Miami Heat, the Orlando Magic need a place to play. I don't know if they're going to do that NBA bubble again. I don't know. WWE is in some serious trouble here if they don't have a venue. So when the CFO says there'll be some kind of center for the foreseeable future, does she mean the Capital Wrestling Center? I don't know. Khan, Nick Khan, no relation to Tony Geeks. Khan would not comment on the length of the NXT deal that they have with the USA Network, but said that WWE subscriptions have held up without NXT. Oh, that's great. The subscriptions have held up, but you actively killed NXT because you put them in the front of the firing line to combat AEW. So I guess it worked. Right? Give me a break. He put over the ratings from Halloween Havoc and said it was a great show. Whatever. Their network subscriptions have held up without NXT, but at the same time, the quality of NXT has dipped immensely. Not really a fair trade-off there, bro. In regards to the, the, uh, the fans being back at the show, There was no answer given on when fans might be back at the shows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Especially when you have uh, Anthony Fauci saying things won't get back to normal until late 2021 or possibly early 2022. Good luck. Good luck. Then Vince McMahon stepped in on the call. McMahon started by praising new management and the new team in place, Khan and Christina Salen, and said there is a new spirit and vibrance in the company with a view of optimism. I've never felt as confident as I currently do about our new management. Of course you're going to say that. Of course you're going to say that because you hired them and fired the old guard. Of course you're going to say that to instill positivity amongst the dummies investing money into your dying brand. So he said that in regards to new management. Nick Khan then ran through his professional background before going through the revenue numbers. Khan announced that WWE has sold a multi-part documentary series to Netflix on the life of Vince McMahon, like I just mentioned. Bill Simmons will be the executive producer on that project. And it will be one of the highest budgeted Netflix documentaries in the history of Netflix. Khan stated that conversations have resumed for alternative strategic options on selling the rights to WWE Network content to major streaming platforms. WWE did that a whole lot during WrestleMania season this year because they needed something coming on in in the heart of the pandemic. We've seen shit on ESPN. That obviously stopped when real sports were back on the network. 
And then we got Fox grabbing some WrestleManias and some best ofs and some documentaries and some Survivor Series and SummerSlam shows and putting them on late at night for everybody that was kind of missing sports because at that time nobody knew if there was going to be football or basketball or baseball. They were all in the middle of getting their abbreviated schedules in place. So all of these other networks, Fox and ESPN, two of the biggest sports networks in the world, were dying for some sort of content. And WWE was there and they willingly sold their rights to these networks because WWE themselves, on top of Fox and ESPN, they had nothing going on. So we heard less of that moving forward on into the summer and then into the fall and more into the winter now. Things are back on television. Sports are back on television. Basketball is going to be starting up a new season. And then you're going to have football right in the middle of things going on into the winter months into the playoff races. Baseball hopefully will be back at a right time next year in April to start a full season instead of an abbreviated season. So WWE is still exploring alternative strategic options in selling their rights, the network rights to content major streaming platforms. Khan mentioned that WWE is working on an event in India. He went over that again. Stephanie got the call and she was on the call with investors And put over the Thunderdome in addition to WWE's perseverance through COVID-19. She touted an increase in ratings after introducing the Thunderdome. I mean, are these people mental? They're hyping ratings after the move into the Thunderdome. Does anybody realize that the ratings went right back to where they were when you were in the Performance Center? What does the Thunderdome have to do uh, about anything? Are you, ri- are you stupid? How does anybody listen to this garbage? I don't understand it. I said it from day one while all the geeks were praising the Thunderdome. Oh, look, look at how extraordinary it looks. Look at what WWE has done for us. What you've done for me? What have you done for me? You moved the show from one location to another location and the writing remains the same. The writing remains terrible. So please tell me what exactly you've done to make my viewing pleasure of your product better. You've done nothing. You've done nothing. I don't care if this show is taking place in your grandmother's fucking shower. You can write a good show. It doesn't matter. So when Stephanie McMahon wants to, uh, you know, hype and tout the ratings for Monday and Friday night when they got into the Thunderdome... Of course there'd be a hype, and of course there'd be an increase in ratings, because everybody was interested to see what WWE was doing, and then when they realized the shows largely largely remained the same and still sucked, every bit of sucking that they were in the Performance Center, then they realized, why am I watching this shit? Nothing has changed. Now Monday Night Raw is back to doing 1.7. So please explain to me how the Thunderdome is really working out there, Steph, Bruce, Vince, <laughs> Christina Salen, she brought up more revenue highlights. WWE Network average paid subscribers were 1.6 million, an increase of 6% because WWE finally got rid of that free bullshit every single month. You got to pay. Why are you giving shit away for free every month? You can't get a real gauge of how many people are subscribed to the network. 1.6, that's an increase of 6% over last quarter. Revenue was 221.6 million. An increase of 19%, or $35.3 million. Operating income was $63.4 million. An increase of nine times, or $57 million. Free cash flow was $110.8 million. An increase from a $16.4 million use of cash. WWE's up. They're not really doing much of anything. They spent $500,000. They spent $500,000 on renting the Thunderdome for an extended period, and they got everything set up. They got everything set up for themselves. So they're doing pretty damn well. Instead of traveling from venue to venue and setting this up and breaking that down and travel costs, when everything is consolidated into one area, obviously there's going to be more increases on top of previous increases. So WWE is living in the American dream right now. They're making more money now 
post-COVID than we were when the pandemic first hit. So they're doing pretty damn well for themselves. Salen stated that while WWE doesn't know when ticketed live events will return, they have the intention of doing so as quickly and as safely as possible. Oh, it better be safely because when you got outbreak after outbreak after outbreak happening on the main roster and in NXT at the Performance Center, you better get on that safety protocol, bro. This is when they opened up the calls for questions from the investors. The first caller asked about the TV ratings and WWE's plans to increase the numbers as well as how it impacts their next contract talks. McMahon said TV viewership is only one of their measurements and that they have far more fans than they've ever had before if you include social media and YouTube. Now, that may be true, But how many people are just following WWE social media and how many people are following WWE's YouTube and they're not even interested in what they are offering on their social media platforms? It's almost as if it is a natural instinct to follow the biggest corporations in the entire world. I could subscribe to something. Now, it doesn't make sense. I don't usually do this, but I could subscribe to something on YouTube or I could follow something on Twitter and Instagram or TikTok or whatever, and I don't necessarily have to have an interest in it. You just keep it in your back pocket in case something breaks because when something breaks, it usually hits the social media platforms first. That's all people do. It's out of habit that WWE has acquired so many people on their social media platforms. They don't necessarily give a shit about the product or give a shit what WWE is doing or care about what's happening on TV. They just have it in their back pocket. How many of those people are translating to actual viewers? Really? None. None. In fact, the shows are so bad, those people on social media rather digest a two, three minute clip on Twitter or a two, three minute clip on YouTube because your shows are terrible and nobody wants to watch a three hour miserable program and feel like they wasted their life on a Monday night. Now he says that's not to say we don't want to increase ratings. Of course we want to increase ratings, but aside from that, our total audience is much bigger. You can't just hang your hat on, okay, ratings are down, we're never off the air. He noted that they are doing everything that they can to improve ratings with the Thunderdome, better writing, and talent. Yeah, really. Really, WWE's doing everything that they can to improve ratings with the Thunderdome. Has the Thunderdome in increased ratings? No. In fact, the the ratings have leveled out to normal ratings where WWE sits right now with the viewing audience. 1.7 on Monday night, 1.8 on Friday night. It's not going anywhere. And why is that? A multitude of reasons that I don't really want to get into right now. The writing sucks. WWE has failed to book for the future. Everybody on the show largely feels just generic. There's no real breakout superstar. There's not one superstar outside of Roman Reigns right now, maybe Sasha and Bayley right now, that people legitimately want to turn on their television and watch one segment, one superstar, Sasha and Bayley for a segment, is not going to get WWE to fix their problems. They're not. Thunderdome is not helping. It doesn't matter where this show is. The Thunderdome is only... A gimmick. It's an aesthetic thing thing that WWE wanted to do because they felt the need to do it. And the talent, Vince and everybody in management, didn't want to work out of the Performance Center anymore. I get it. I get it. But it was never used as a way or it was never meant to be a way to increase ratings. I don't know how anybody is confusing moving from the PC to the Thunderdome with increased ratings. It doesn't work that way. And it never was meant to work that way. I told you from day one. Better writing. If WWE wanted to write better shows, then they would have written better shows. They have failed to do that. I can't remember one show that I would actually go out there and say, my God, man, this was a great episode of Monday Night Raw. This was a great pay-per-view. This was a great SmackDown on Fox. I can't remember the last time I actually said that and meant it. A segment here might be great. A segment there might be great. But these shows largely suck. And then they are improving the talent. They're pushing the talent to improve all other aspects of the show. Really now? Really? 
Outside of all the major names that I just mentioned, who exactly are you pushing to the forefront so that people really get invested in the future? You just killed five people in a group called Retribution. Ali was made into their new leader. It's almost as if you're punishing him by putting him as the new leader of the group. Ricochet, Cedric, the Hurt Business is one of the best things in WWE. They don't even feel special anymore. Keith Lee, dead. Not really dead yet, but on his way to being. Matt Riddle, buried. I don't give a shit what the reports say. Matt Riddle is buried. Matt Riddle, he's not dead yet, but you can, se you can sense that WWE is on their way to making this guy feel as ordinary as everybody else. Rollins has fallen off. The feud with Mysterio won't end. The women's division is terrible. There's no depth in the tag team division. Nobody on these shows feels important. So please, Vince Dunn, Bruce, I'd love for somebody to tell me what you're doing with the talent to make the shows better. WWE is not building for the future. WWE's intent is to make everybody feel ordinary and they don't give a shit about building for the future. They don't want a breakout star. If you are not in their eye, if you are not in their plans, you will never be a breakout star, no matter how many times WWE goes on social media and says that they encourage people to go out there and build their own brand on social media. Bullshit. Bullshit. If you do, you get buried. If you do, you get punished. So please, so please, one does not equal two here. Give me a break. So Michael White's noted that they're confident about their TV rights going up in the next round of contract talks. Really? I highly doubt that. I don't see Fox paying a billion dollars for this trash. After the four years is up here, I don't see Fox even renewing. And if they do renew, it's going to be for half of what WWE got this time. Give me a break. You think Fox is happy with their ratings? Fox is probably looking, looking for ways to cut ship. Or, or cut ties here. Abandon ship. Then we got a caller asking about their alternative plans for the network. Whites noted that WWE is looking for a licensing deal, but they won't sell the streaming service. He stated that WWE is in constant talks with various players, both domestic and internationally, about licensing it. I mean, I don't care. As long as the WWE Network is still around in the capacity that it's in right now for me to do work, that's all I give a shit about. Then we got Salen, Christina Salen, the CFO, was asked about expenses, which she mentioned that WWE estimates that the majority of the furloughed employees will return by the end of the year. So that's that. They did let some people go, but the majority of them will come back. I call her asked about the outlook on 2021, including any assumption on Saudi Arabia and the events next year. Salen did not answer because she just doesn't know. She doesn't know the world climate on what it's going to look like tomorrow. Never mind next year. Regarding when their Amway Center deal expires, she stated, our assumption is that it'll be a venue like the Amway Center for the rest of 2020. And she added that there are many places that they can go in 2021. I, I don't even know about that. I really don't even know about that. So WWE would probably, you know, do right for themselves and it would be in their best interest to be in the Amway Center for as long as possible. But where they go next, I don't know, man. I don't know what state, what city, what venue, if fans are going to be allowed or not, if the state officials for that particular state are going to allow something like WWE to come on in, even though it's a closed set. I don't know. I don't know. So when she mentioned it's going to be a center or a hub of sorts, I could see it being the Capital Wrestling Center. Otherwise, why did WWE make up the PC and change it drastically to fit almost a mini Thunderdome in there? I don't know. So we'll see what happens there. When asked about when WWE's TV deal for NXT with USA expires, Khan wouldn't give an exact timeline, but praised Triple H for the ratings on Wednesday night and that the deal with the USA has a long runway. I don't think they should be on the USA Network. And if they have to be on the USA Network, move them to a Tuesday night. I don't understand why somebody, nobody asks these questions. What good is NXT being on Wednesday night when you are killing the product, when you can move it to Tuesday night 
which USA wanted to do. Vince didn't want to do it because he wants to kill NXT any way he can. He wants to kill AEW any way he can. He doesn't give a shit if he kills NXT in the process as long as he kills and takes away from AEW. What happened when NXT was moved on Tuesday night and AEW was left unopposed on Wednesday night? They hit a million viewers, right? Vince doesn't want that to happen, but he's also harming NXT in the long run as well. NXT could be trending towards a million viewers on its own night as well. There'd be more interest on the product. It would be healthy growth for the product. It's a bad business move. Their greed and Vince McMahon's determination to kill an opponent is killing his own brand. I don't know why anybody on this call did not ask, well, why don't you move to Tuesday night? It would be better in this, 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 and this way, and WWE would be forced to give an answer. Or in this case, they probably wouldn't answer because everything that they say and everything that they do is the right way. And they don't want to hear what's actually right from other people on the outside looking in. A caller asked about the president. I feel like if I say his name, I'll get demonetized on this platform. Saying that McMahon was in a meeting regarding sports returning during the pandemic. McMahon said that there was a panel... And he was on this panel via a conference call with Roger Goodell. He noted that they will return with fans once COVID lets up and they can do shows safely for their fans and performers. Again, we don't know. So WWE folks, all they love to do during these things is tout how much money they made and they open up the line for questions and they give such vague bullshit responses to legitimately everything. But it also goes back on the investors there on the call. Nobody has the balls to ask a goddamn question. Nobody has the balls to actually confront these people on what the issues are at hand. None of them. None of them. You want to know why, 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 why? This, 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 and this is happening, but you fail to ask the questions. You're injecting money into their stock and you fail to ask the questions. Do better. Just like WWE, Vince, Bruce, and the writing on Monday and Friday night. Do better. Do better. Now, speaking of the Amway Center, this was mentioned a couple of times in the conference call. WWE supposedly will be leaving the Amway Center. This is the Thunderdome that they call in December. Now, WWE originally made a deal with the arena in August that was supposed to end in November. Now, WWE extended that and they came to an agreement on a one-month extension. The Amway Center is the home of the Orlando Magic in the NBA. Thus, the NBA is planning to hold games at normal arenas again in December. WWE will need a new home to hold TV events. WrestleVotes tweeted out this week that WWE will leave the arena by December 1st and is currently looking for new arenas in Texas, North Carolina, and Illinois. They say, and I quote, Thunderdome update. Sources states that WWE is set to leave the Amway Center by the 1st of December. Arenas in North Carolina, Texas, and Illinois were discussed over the weekend. WWE needs to find a spot where no team plays, plus able to house the weight and the power requirements of the setup, end quote. Now, I, I don't know how strenuous of a process that is, but just based off the internet and the power of these places, I, I don't know where WWE is going to be able to go. You know, most of these places don't really have the requirements and the power to generate something like a Thunderdome or the internet capacity to generate something like the Thunderdome. Like WWE needs. I don't know how much of a problem that's going to be. I don't know. And mix that with the COVID situation. Will states allow it? Does states in the United States, such as Texas, Illinois, and North Carolina, do their state officials want something like WWE coming on into their state? You know, a lot of places are closing down. A lot of places are boarding up. A lot of places are going with the lockdown route, which I think is fucking terrible. I don't think lockdowns help at all. I mean, give me a break. You're going to lock down for what? You're going to go right back to where we were in March and April, and you're going to kill the businesses that right now are even struggling to stay afloat with the fucking restrictions in place. I don't get it. Lockdowns do not work. So this is bullshit. I don't know what WWE is going to do, but they got to figure out something because by the time you and I 
get done with all of this. It'll be January already, and we'll be getting ready for WrestleMania season and the Royal Rumble. I don't know if there's something else in Florida that WWE would like to house themselves in. I don't know. But they better figure something out, and I can imagine that whoever's in charge of this and has been doing the scouting on where they could potentially go, they right now are dealing with a massive headache. I can't see this being an easy thing for WWE at all. The other big story, folks, WWE is closing Twitch and Cameo pages. AJ Styles reacted. Page reacted in a very heartfelt clip that we've seen floating around on Twitter. She then talks about unionization as well, which I think is a fucking fairy tale. I don't think that is ever going to happen. But WWE on Thursday afternoon closed Twitch and Cameo pages. And right now, WWE is in full control of everybody wanting to stream. Now, WWE does have a Twitch. I don't know if you guys realize this. WWE does have a Twitch channel. It's not really used for anything. It's used to stream pre-shows for the pay-per-views, and it's used to stream The Bump. But that is about it. They don't usually use it for anything. So WWE, I can assume, and I talked about this when I actually dove into this big topic several episodes ago right here on the podcast, WWE more than likely is trying to work out an agreement with Cameo and trying to work out an agreement with Twitch where WWE performers, if they want to stream, they have access to the Twitch channel and they're given a schedule on when to do it. You could watch AJ Styles at this time. You could watch Paige at this time. You could watch Zelina and Aleister Black and Xavier and Cesaro and Tyler Breeze and Fandango and Seth Rollins or Adam Cole or whoever else is streaming. Mia Yim, Dakota Kai, right? Ember Moon. All these different people that have found solace on Twitch in a day and age where there is no live touring, where there is no potential to sell merchandise like you were selling merchandise at these live shows, live ticket revenue, etc., etc. They found solace in Twitch. A lot of people look at it as a way to become closer to the fans, to get the fans invested in who you are, not only as a human being, but as a performer. And that's going to translate to them being interested in you to watch you on their programming. You're selling yourself for the betterment of the shows, for the betterment of the product on Monday and Friday night. WWE doesn't look at it that way. Now, there were other things that played into this decision and WWE eliminating all third-party platforms and them wanting to seize control over everything. You got AJ Styles going on there talking about Paul Heyman and, you know, just letting loose on the dirt that he doesn't like Paul Heyman, the, the good brothers got fired, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. why he doesn't like this, why he doesn't like that. He's got his son on Twitch saying he doesn't watch WWE anymore because it's not cool. His father works for the WWE. He's one of the best wrestlers on the planet. You don't watch your own father and the show that he's on. How do you think WWE interpreted that, folks? Not only with the dirt being spread about Paul Heyman, you got Paige out there fucking showing off her titties on social media, on on Twitch, right? And you think WWE wants that as a representation of their product? You got Lana out there promoting other brands that WWE did not approve of. It is a clusterfuck. On top of that, All of these men and women were using their WWE-given IPs. They were using their stage names to build their own Twitch channels. Well, WWE was the one who created these characters and these names for them to use. That doesn't give you the right to go on Twitch and build your own foundation off the name that WWE gave you. Nobody knows who Soraya Knight is. Nobody knows who AJ Styles is. Would they be able to build a Twitch family or Twitch following with their real given name? No. No. You're more interested in who Paige WWE is than Soraya Knight. Then everybody tried to change their names from the stage names to the real names, and it was too late at that point. The damage was already done. Now, I don't know what happens to someone like Asuka. I don't know what happens to Kana Chan TV. I don't know what happens to everybody that use their real names, Austin Creed, right? I don't know what happens when somebody like an Adam Cole who owns his name and an AJ Styles who owns his name. Now, those names are owned by those performers, but they're also giving WWE permission to use those names as long as they're under contract. That is a very gray area. 
Now, I don't have a problem with them using their real names and streaming on their own time. But it all comes down to WWE wanting to micromanage and seize control. WWE feels that if they are in control of everything, then nothing bad can happen. That's all they care about. And with all the money everybody's making and WWE seeing none of that, the investors are probably going to end up asking, where's all this money coming from? Why aren't we making more money? Why aren't you doing something about this? From a financial standpoint to the investors, it is a bad, bad look. They want maximized revenue. If WWE is allowing everybody to go out there and make thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars on Twitch and WWE seeing none of that in their overall numbers every quarter, somebody's going to eventually catch wind of that and ask, what's going on here? Why am I being shorted money? Meanwhile, these people are using WWE's IPs and WWE names out there for their own good. And we are seeing none of it. It is a very gray area, man. It really is a very gray area. But I get where the performers are coming from. I get where WWE is coming from. There's got to be some middle ground. But the thing that is pissing everybody off is that WWE refuses to address a middle ground. They... Put fear into everybody. This is being closed. That's being closed. We're closing it down. We're seizing control. Then WWE came out and said that everybody is allowed to do it under their real name. And then, again, they backtracked on that. And then WWE took it all away permanently. So WWE wanted to end it. They came to a conclusion. And then they went back on their conclusion, in fairness. And they ended up being the bad guy again. It is a very, very sticky situation. Really sticky situation. For someone like Paige, I can absolutely understand where she's coming from. Not a fan of her, but I can absolutely see where she is coming from. She's hurt. She's not even an employee of the company. You signed her to do what? She can't wrestle. She's not going anywhere else to wrestle. And if you let her do what she wants to do, then you're going to put it in her mind hey, WWE was always family. Now you're putting in her, now you're putting it in her mind. If she does have an opportunity to wrestle again, you think she's going to go back to WWE after what you've done to her now? No, absolutely not. That's a chance that I would have gladly taken to let her do what she has to do because she's not working. She can't wrestle. Her dream was crushed. Where is she going? What is she doing right now? You want her to do what? Live off the money that you're paying her to do what? She wants to go out there and do what she wants. She wants to go out there and work and play and have fun and interact. But on WWE side, I see that she built up something all on her own by using WWE's given IP, something that they've created. Gray area, man. Very, very gray area. AJ Styles went on his Discord on Thursday afternoon and announced that he was suspending his Styles Clash accounts on Mixer, Facebook, and Twitch due to WWE's new policy on unauthorized third-party platform activities. Styles thanked his fans for the support and for the memories. He also said he will be leaving his Discord server up to keep in touch with fans for future situations. He says... I want to thank you all for the greatest memories on Mixer and on Twitch. I will cherish these mer memories, and I love every one of you that have made this possible and supported me. As many of you know, WWE is making some changes that involve streaming. We will see what the future holds in that regard. With that being said, I will be suspending Styles Clash and the stream. This isn't goodbye, but this is see you sometime in the future. We will leave Discord open. But since it won't be monitored, we will be making changes. Chris or I, I guess that's his moderator. Chris or I will let you know what looks like or what it looks like once we figure it out. If you see me at the arenas or wherever, be sure to let me know you're part of the phenomenal family. Again, this isn't the end. It is just a pause. Thank you again for your support. Mia Yim, who is reckoning in retribution, announced on Twitter that... Her It's Me SYB Twitch stream will also be suspended and pulled down right before her scheduled gameplay with Jessamine Duke. 
Sorry, guys, no more stream for the time being. Thank you for making these past few difficult months manageable. It's not goodbye, it's just a see you later. And that's all she said. Cesaro announced that he was suspending his Claudio's Cafe channel on Twitch during his stream. He says, and I quote, well, I appreciate everybody spending some time with me here. I don't know when the next stream is going to be. I'll definitely let you guys know. Thank you, everybody, for spending your time with me here. And thanks for the subs. Thanks for the gifts. Thanks for the follows. I really do appreciate it. I hope I'll be back soon, but when, I don't know. So, yeah, one last race. Who are we going to race today? So, yeah, I don't know when I'll be back, he says. End quote. Paige, the biggest name here, got emotional. Or the biggest Twitch streamer here, I, I, would, I would assume she's the biggest out of all the names here. Paige got emotional during one of her Twitch streams on Thursday afternoon on her Soraya official channel after finding out that WWE and co-workers are going to have to shut down their platforms. WWE shutting down their platforms and her co-workers are shutting down their platforms via WWE. She says, you guys, you have to make this, you guys. There may be a time where I have to stop streaming. So I just think in case I walk away, if I have to walk away, let's make these next two streams crazy. I have to go off. If I have to leave, we make today and Saturday fucking crazy before I have to leave because it might have to come to that. Paige continued texting, apparently with co-workers on her phone, and came back to the camera. She was more emotional than she was during that last uh, statement as she went back to addressing her viewers. She then commented that she cannot deal with WWE anymore. She also blamed the company for overworking her to the point that she suffered the career-ending neck injury during a WWE live event match in December 2017. Now, I, I don't know if that's the case or if WWE did that or if she's just angry now because of the situation at hand. Now, WWE overworked you. Honey, you're in a business where you're putting your body on the line every single day and something like that can happen at any given moment. Now you want to blame WWE for overworking you because you can't stream on Twitch anymore? Give me a break. Give me a break. That has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Overworking you. It happened. You're not the only one to get injured and sit out and not wrestle anymore. Don't miss the bigger picture here. WWE is fucked up, but that doesn't mean you got to throw your injury in their face now. Yes, you should not. You should not be thinking of the injury, and the injury itself here is the reason why you're out. And you should be given every right to because you can't do anything else. You should be given the right to stream, but that doesn't give you the right to throw it in WWE's face now and blame them completely for that and this. Come on, you're not innocent in this thing either. So she cannot deal with WWE anymore. She blamed the company for overworking her. She says, and I quote, I've honestly got to the point where I cannot deal with this company anymore. So now I have to make a very important decision. I'm fucking tired, man. I broke my fucking neck twice. Twice for this company. Over fucking worked. I broke my neck twice for this company. And all I wanted was to... They don't realize that this community isn't just about fucking subs. It isn't about that. It isn't about that at all. We built a wonderful community, a wonderful fucking family where this is an escape for a lot of people, including myself. I can't wrestle anymore. I was worked so hard in WWE that I can't wrestle anymore. My neck is fucked. My whole dream got taken away from me, dude. And I had to have something that fulfilled even the smallest part of that huge fucking void that I lost with wrestling. A huge fucking void. I couldn't wrestle anymore. Something I lived, I breathed, wrestling since I was a fetus. And it got ripped away from me and I had to find something that even filled a little bit of that. Twitch was such a wonderful thing for me. It's such a wonderful place for me. And I understand. I understand if they're like, hey, if you're wrestling every day, if you're doing shows every day, if you're on TV constantly, that's fine. But I'm a fucking injured wrestler. I can't wrestle anymore. I get used for media stuff sometimes, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm in my fucking house. I'm going fucking crazy, dude. I need something to keep me sane, man. And Twitch was my escape from that. Right now, I'm just sitting on my fucking ass. End quote. 
Paige also brought up her private photos and videos that were leaked on the internet a few years ago. She brought up her failed drug tests and relationship with Alberto Del Rio, who is in a shitstorm in himself. She also accused WWE of treating her bad. WWE treated you bad. Are you fucking serious? How many times has Triple H went to bat for you? They gave you a five-year fucking deal. They treated you fucking bad. They gave you a five-year deal to do nothing. They put you on TV and made you the GM of SmackDown. I guess we were supposed to forget about that one. WWE treated you bad? WWE treated you bad. Triple H. Triple H. Kept you away from Del Rio. Whatever Del Rio was doing now and whoever Del Rio victimized could have been you. Could have been you. Who saved you from that? Paul. Paul. Oh, I guess we were supposed to forget that one too, huh? They treated you bad. Bullshit. Typical fucking millennial is Paige. Blaming everybody else for the current situation at hand. Unbelievable. I had a terrible couple of years where I had tapes leaked about me. Whose fault was that? Was that WWE's fault? Was that WWE's fault? You got hacked. You got hacked. Maybe next time, don't put videos on your phone of you jizzing on the fucking NXT women's title. No, but I'm sure WWE would have gladly disrespected their fucking title. Give me a break. You got other fucking shit on there that shouldn't have been on your goddamn fucking phone. You left yourself jeopardized. Give me a break, folks. Give me a break. I've had enough of this fucking story. This woman is out of her fucking mind. Tapes leaked about me where I popped a couple of drug tests because I was in an abusive fucking relationship. And that's the only thing I could fucking do. See, people think I should be thankful that I still have a fucking job right. And I am. But it doesn't mean I should be treated like fucking shit. End quote. Boo hoo hoo. Paige said at one point that she would keep streaming because she would keep streaming because her neck was taken away twice from her and she won't allow WWE to take her Twitch next. She also mentioned potential unionization in pro wrestling, revealing that she's been in touch with several lawyers. People don't realize I'm outspoken as fuck. I will say how I feel. I don't care who you are. I will say how I feel because I don't like being walked all over. I'm going to start looking into more unionization. I've been learning about it from a lawyer. This is bigger than Twitch. It's about fucking control of your own life and not being controlled by anyone. I gave 10 years, man. I poured my fucking heart and soul into this. I had a bad couple of years like every motherfucker has. I'm not the only one who is fucking controversial around here. I'm not the only one. It's fucking louder when it comes to me because I'm a fucking female. I hate using that because I'm a woman, but it's because I'm a woman and women don't usually stand up for themselves, end quote. Paige went on and on and on that she will continue to stream for her fans and see how the situation plays out. Paige says she loves WWE, but doesn't agree. Yeah, you're sick of the company, but then you love WWE. You love WWE, but you blame them for legitimately every bad thing that fucking happened to you in your life when most of it was your own fucking fault. Cry me a river. Paige says she loves WWE, but doesn't agree with what's being done in regards to the third-party activity. I don't think anybody agrees with WWE on this, but don't victimize yourself here. She noted that she understands that this is a business decision and nothing personal, but she still doesn't have to agree with it. She also noted that she felt sad at first, but now she feels empowered after speaking out on the latest stream. She told fans that she will be speaking out more about what's on her mind over the next couple of days. Zelina Vega and Aleister Black have a stream, if you guys have not known. They also discussed the situation on their ATOZ Twitch channel. And they reiterated that they are not 100% sure of what will happen to the account as they have not talked to the office, but they know that there will be a conversation on the matter come SmackDown, which happened yesterday. So they say, and I quote, Aleister Black says actually, and I quote, in all fairness, we don't know. We don't know, but it's starting to look like, obviously, that this might be the last one for a while. We haven't been told anything, but obviously at TV, and I know there's going to be a discussion and a conversation about this, but, like, it's not definite. 
It's not like this is the last final stream ever. Vega then added, although it could be, I want you to be prepared for that too. Black then said, it could be, but we don't think it is, but you never know. I think what's happening is they're trying to find a way to make it coexist within WWE and in the universe, and whatever way they want to do that, I don't know. And if we agree to that, I don't know. A lot of I don't know is here. Nobody knows anything. I literally can't tell you anything because we don't know anything. Vega then said, only because we haven't been told anything by office. So Black, Vega, they acknowledged the statements by Styles and Yim and said they made those because they were told separately. Vega said it's their business and she's not sure if Yim and Styles have had conversations with the office, but she and Black have not. That just goes to show you the hierarchy in WWE. Some were told, some were not told. But everybody's got to abide. Everybody's got to be good little soldiers. So they go on to say, and I quote again, I think you can definitely say that this is the last one for a while, for at least a little while. I don't know how long that while is. Obviously, at SmackDown, we're going to get a little more clarity on things, but I don't know. Like Styles, Black, and Vega, they plan to keep their Discord servers open, all of them. So if you guys are a part of their Discord, they will be kept open to interact with fans. I'm just going to be candid, Vega said, and just like... We don't know, but we have a good idea. There's this whole thing of trying to make it work for everybody that we are discussing with right now, and we're hoping that there is some kind of middle ground. Is there? There may not be, because this thing, even though it sounds great, you know, there might not be. And I hope that there is. It sounds like middle ground would be awesome, but I also want to prepare people. Because I don't want to give you guys hope and then slap you guys in the face and go, sorry, that is what it is. We're preparing you for both. We're preparing you for the, hey, we figured out something and it's going to work this way. And it's going to be a little different and it's going to work somehow. But it's not going to be exactly what this is because I don't think it'll ever be this. But it'll be different if there is that. And there's also the side of the situation where we just have to stop. And I want you guys to be prepared for that. And I want you to be, be prepared for both. I just want you to be 100% in the loop and 100% honest with you. So they acknowledge Paige being upfront and honest with their viewers or her viewers, AJ Styles with his viewers and not holding anything back. Vega recalled how Paige also said officials have not said anything concrete to her either, but Vega is sure something will happen to the third party activity. Black and Vega also commented on how they've built their platform together with the fans, despite Black being a very private person. I want to give Black some credit here, man. He's been very, he's been very professional. Whereas Paige just went on a rant about uh, everything just going wrong and blaming WWE for it. Black said, we don't know. We're going to talk about it at TV on Friday, last night on SmackDown or, or before SmackDown. And we just don't know yet. But I think it's a situation where WWE is trying to incorporate it into what they are doing business-wise. He has a level head. I appreciate that about him. He seems like a really good dude. So he's a private person, but he's also trying to be open and honest about it and be optimistic about it all. Vega, a little bit more real, that's the New York side of her. Yeah, it, it could be this, but it could also be that. I don't want to tell you guys something and then, you know, come back here and tell you something else. So she's just being the realist about it. Alistair Black is being the optimist here. But WWE have also, on top of Twitch, deactivated Cameo accounts and are no longer taking requests from fans. So anybody on Cameo, no longer taking requests from fans. Uh, we got Big E, Matt Riddle, Owens, all others have deactivated their Cameo accounts, which were big earners for some of the wrestlers. Big E made somewhere near $70,000 by being on Cameo, but he was using Big E. Big E is a WWE-owned entity. Alexa Bliss, the same thing. Roman Reigns, the same thing. WWE-owned entities. There are some wrestlers who remain on Cameo, such as Lacey Evans and Mandy Rose, among others. It remains to be seen if their accounts will be deactivated soon, like the others. So, I don't know what's going to happen. It was just the initial close down and then the initial meltdown by Paige on her Twitch. But again, folks, nothing that I've said previously has really changed on how I think about this situation. WWE needs to find a middle ground, man. This is a big enough situation that will affect current and affect future. WWE needs to find a middle ground. You've already upset everybody at this because you are pretty much telling somebody 
not to do something as simple as stream video games on Twitch because WWE's been out of the loop. They don't realize how much money can be made on Twitch. They allowed everybody to do it. They could have been a middle ground until we start going live with fans in arenas and touring the United States. You can do it. There should have been some middle ground. There should have been some compromise here until WWE gets back on the road full time every single week with fans. They should have been allowed the wrestlers to stream on Twitch. And then you come up with a solution to maybe incorporate that into your partnership with Twitch. Something should have been done. Now you've upset everybody. You've upset legitimately everybody, present and now future. If you're there on the roster, this could be a determining factor as you look at all of this and determine where you want to be, how you want to work, and who you want to work for. This could be a determining factor on if you stay or go with the WWE. Are you upset enough to leave? Do you want to be a streamer or do you want to be a professional wrestler? You got you to talk about that amongst yourself. And family and friends, what do you want to do? You didn't get in the, into this business to be a streamer on Twitch. You didn't also get your Twitch following by just being yourself. You got your Twitch following by being a WWE superstar. You got to take all of that into consideration. But what do you want to be, a pro wrestler or do you want to be a Twitch streamer? Do you want a main event WrestleMania? Do you want to get fucked by creative and never get there? Or do you want to be a Twitch streamer? And for everybody looking at this from the outside that's not employed by WWE yet... Are you going to use this as a catalyst to maybe not go to WWE? Look at all the restrictions there, man. It's a terrible work environment. I want my freedoms. What is more important to you, freedoms or making money with the largest promotion in the industry? I think at the end of the day, the freedoms is going to win out. And I think a lot of people are now realizing that. It may be too little too late, but a lot of people are now realizing that. WWE is not completely in the wrong here. They're doing what they need to do as far as business and for their investors and for Wall Street and their shareholders. They're doing what needs to be done. But there is a right way to go about it, a more level-headed way to go about it. You just can't drop the hammer on everybody in one fucking day and say, that's it. It's got to be this way without discussing everybody's feelings about it. Now, I don't know if anybody in WWE that's on Twitch has revolted, gone into Vince McMahon's office, had a meeting with Vince McMahon about it. Nobody knows. I don't think anybody will know. But this is what happens when you just roll over and die as a WWE employee. They have trained you to not say anything. Vince doesn't want to hear it. And even if Vince does hear it, he's not going to change his mind. This is not going to change with a black or a Vega, or a Page, or any of these guys individually going into Vince McMahon's office. You need to establish an army mentality and storm WWE's offices and get in Vince McMahon's face and address this situation as a roster, not individually. If you don't do that, then nobody's going to win. If you don't do that, nobody's going to stand the chance. So for all the crying that I see on social media from fans and performers alike. How many of you have developed a army mentality and went to Vince McMahon in number? I guarantee you the answer is zero. And that's why you are in the position that you're in. Because WWE has manipulated, brainwashed, and trained you to think that you don't stand a chance and your word means nothing. You sit there. You are obedient. You obey. You take your fucking shit and you sit on it because Vince wants it that way. Nothing will change unless WWE has an internal revolt and everything is done with a team-like mentality. Until then, nothing will change. Today's Off The Script is sponsored by my great friends over at The Ridge. Ridge.com slash script. It is light, it is sleek, it is industrial, and it doesn't awkwardly bulge in your back pocket, and it completely changed my entire outlook on my wallet situation. Guys, look at this. The Ridge just introduced the 18 karat gold ridge wallet this is one of many designs that the ridge is producing right now obviously this is beautiful but you guys can get this or anything you want using our code script at checkout when you visit ridge.com 
slash script. It holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash with the money clip, with the cash strap. There's over 30 colors and designs. I am a forged carbon type of guy, but if you guys like the gold, by all means, go and get the gold. The durable materials means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You guys can buy one wallet and own one wallet for the rest of your life. And the team over at Ridge is so confident that they will let you test drive it for 45 days. And if you don't like it, which I don't know why you wouldn't, you guys can absolutely get every penny back with a full refund. Guys, go and get yourself a Ridge today. On top of all that, they have RFID blocking qualities and technology that protects you from digital pickpockers. Do you feel safer? Do I feel safer? Absolutely. I know many others do as well. And this is something that brings you peace of mind. Also, guys, 10% off free shipping. That brings you peace of mind as well. Ridge.com slash script. Use code script at checkout. And I want to thank them for being not only great friends of the show, but sponsors today right here on Off The Script. You know, the old saying is, if it's not broken, don't fix it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Folks, I think there are a lot of people that don't like what I say, but realize the things that I say are correct. They just refuse to admit it. And they refuse to believe it because they like living in sunshine and rainbows. And I don't. I'll walk through the fucking stormy skies to tell you exactly what it is you are watching. Done. Imagine waking up on one morning during the week and if you could fix one thing about WWE, what would that thing be? Would it be the commentary teams on Monday or Friday night? Would it be the writing teams? Would it be the presentation? Would it be the fact that the championships don't mean anything? The fact that there needs to be some semblance of order and wins and losses in a division, tag team division, women's division, whatever the case may be. Fix the pay-per-view schedule. Put more of a precedence on actual shows on Monday and Friday. Night. Make them feel a little bit more important. Proper build for pay-per-views. The laundry list goes on and on with the WWE. But imagine waking up one morning and knowing there's all these issues and things that need your dire attention. Imagine waking up one morning and the one thing that you feel needs to be fixed the one thing that you feel needs to be changed is Matt Riddle. I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to change Matt Riddle's name. That's the one thing that you're hanging your hat on. Of all the things that are wrong with the product, Matt Riddle's name is the one thing that sticks out amongst a variety, a list of things. Folks, this is not a troll. This is not some April Fool's prank come 10 months later. This is the reality of the situation. WWE has changed Matt Riddle's name on Monday Night Raw. He is no longer Matt Riddle, Matthew Riddle, Matthew Riddell. He is now just simply known as Riddle. Who the fuck is Riddle? Why would you feel the need to change somebody's name from Matt Riddle to Riddle? Now, Vince may have his own reasons. I don't give a shit what his reasons are. I think his reasons are complete fucking bullshit. I think it's bogus. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. The guy is a madman. The guy is a madman. But in my honest opinion, I think Matt Riddle is powerful. I think Matt Riddle, as far as the way you say it, the way it rolls off the tongue, the way you see it in a graphic, a pre-match graphic, putting it on the fucking video highlights of something that you're promoting, whether it be a match on Raw, match on SmackDown, match on pay-per-view, putting him in a big match moment. Matt Riddle is much more powerful than just Riddle. Who is Riddle? Why did there need to be a name change for somebody that did not need a name change? Now, I joked. I joked about this months ago. 
when he debuted on SmackDown. I'm like, give this guy two months. WWE will cut his name in half. This guy comes out saying, bro, this guy comes out without wearing shoes. WWE accentuated that aspect. Oh, look at this guy. He says bro a lot. Look how many different emotions he could use the word bro with. This guy wrestles without shoes on. Oh, he looks like a fucking weirdo. I've never seen anybody wrestle without shoes before. The first major promo that they had this guy cut was in the ring going over a story about why he don't wear shoes. And it wasn't even close to being real. Because they just wanted to poke fun at him about him not wearing shoes. I said this months ago when he debuted, watch this guy debut on the main roster. And Bruce looks at this guy and says, oh, your last name is uh, quite similar to the Batman villain, the Riddler. Watch this guy come out wearing a green fucking jacket, skin tight suit with black question marks on it. He's got the fucking mask. They changed the color of his hair from brown to red. Give him a fucking green top hat and a question mark cane and he starts swinging it around on SmackDown and they call him Matt Riddler and they give him a gimmick of a Batman villain on SmackDown. Folks, if you thought I was joking then, I never joke. I am as serious as a heart attack when I speak on this show. Everything that comes from my mouth comes from my soul on this show. I say it, I mean it. I don't say shit to make you laugh. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But even when I'm angry, I still try and hide it behind some comedy. I was legit serious when I mentioned this months ago. Now, WWE is... Pretty much one step away from just finishing the job. Bruce, Vince, Dunn, please, why don't you just go out there and add the extra R on top of his name, Riddler, and just fucking finish the job. Really? Really? Just give him a green top hat, give him a uh, green suit, green jacket with question marks over it. He could team with fucking Rey Mysterio and Dominic and just fucking call it a day, man. Give me a break. Give me a break. Did this need to happen? Did it need to happen? This is just another case of Vince McMahon taking somebody that everybody knew was going to be a big deal. Triple H booked him perfectly. And this is just another case of WWE taking something from NXT that was done right, breaking it down, and building it up in Vince McMahon's image. That's all it is. And at this point, I really... I'm really struggling to find out and figure out if anybody legitimately gives a shit at this point. I think everybody fucking left at this situation, knowing that WWE was was ridiculous, but I also thought they left in a way as if they just don't fucking care anymore. WWE has ruined Matt Riddle in three months. Like, I knew that they would to a point where he don't even feel special anymore. They're doing it right now with not only Riddle, but with Keith Lee. They're calling him the fucking dragon. How do you get dragons when talking about Keith Lee? Are you fucking serious? I mean, I don't know, folks. I don't know. I might be ranting. I might be a little too much. But there's no way. And please don't tell me we're going to get over it. Yeah, we're going to get over it. But you saying that doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right. This was absolutely one of the most unnecessary acts of creative that I think I've ever seen. Honestly. Honestly. Now, it was noted that WWE on Thursday made the decision to drop Matt Riddle's first name and he will simply be known now as Riddle. Vince McMahon has done this many times with wrestlers over the years, but this time there was a specific reason behind this name change. Now, it was noted in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter that they wanted... To not have people Google Matt Riddle and have details coming up about the lawsuit that was filed by Samantha Tavel, Candy Cartwright, against him and WWE. So WWE is treating this as, oh my God, we can't research Matt Riddle. I'm going to Google Matt Riddle right now. I want to see what pops up. Let me see. Let's see. Matt Riddle in Google. 
Matt Riddle reacts to WWE name change. Matt Riddle undergoes name change. Reason revealed why. Matt Riddle has a name change for a very interesting reason. Note on why WWE likely changed Matt Riddle's name. WWE reportedly changed Matt Riddle's name over a Candy Cartwright lawsuit. So what difference does it make? You change the name and people are going to associate the name change with the Candy Cartwright lawsuit. So why change the name? Why change the name? Vince has a very unique reason why he wanted to drop Matt Riddle's first name. What else? Matt Riddle reportedly received name change due to Google search concerns over lawsuit. So people are not going to Google Matt Riddle lawsuit or Riddle lawsuit. Huh? Let me see. Let me type in Riddle. Riddle lawsuit. Let's see. There you go. Look, WWE issue statement on reported fi- lawsuit filed by Matt Riddle, Matt Riddle and WWE, and more sued for $10 million each by Samantha Tavel. Folks, folks, when I get ranty about something, there's a reason why. When I yell, there's a reason why. This is fucking unnecessary. WWE changed the name of somebody that did not need a name change for a reason that is fucking ridiculous. Because now when they see the title, oh, Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle changed his name because of concerns over a lawsuit with so-and-so. They're going to look up the lawsuit anyway. I I can't, I can't. You know, Paige, Paige says I can't with this company anymore. I can't. You can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up. You can't. So that's what Meltzer said. Riddle then went on Twitter later that evening and said he was fine with the decision that they changed his name. And he preferred it. He preferred to be just called Riddle because people have been calling me Riddle. People have been calling me by my last name for most of his life. Really? What WWE PR fucking clown told you to go on social media and say that, bro? Huh? Huh? Give me a fucking break. This guy signed a contract with WWE in 2018. He more than likely signed a three-year deal. Bro, if this guy fucking signs another deal with WWE, I would be fucking shocked. Absolutely fucking shocked. Now, the change has already been reflected across WWE platforms on WWE.com. That's where people found out about the situation. It simply says Riddle on his profile page when you look up the Monday Night Raw roster. According to Fightful Select, Riddle's match against Sheamus, which was very good, was loved by Vince McMahon so much that he was complimentary to it after the match was over to everybody involved, Riddle, Sheamus, and the producers. He praised the performers and he praised the producers. As a result of those accolades from Vince McMahon, Matt Riddle is now known as just Riddle. He is also set for a serious transition For his character. I don't know what that means. But somebody's been watching a little bit too much fucking Batman. Or has been playing Arkham Knight on fucking PlayStation 4. I don't know. Somebody's been flying around Gotham City collecting all the fucking question marks. Hidden in Gotham City. Oh, that's right. We can name Matt Riddle now just Riddle. Man, we can give him a new Riddler gimmick. Riddle me this, bro. When is that coming? They'll probably do it on SmackDown just, or Monday Night Raw, rather, this coming Monday, just to fuck with me. Riddle me this, bro. As a result of these accolades from Vince McMahon, now he's going under a serious transition, and Vince McMahon's going to give him a little bit more leeway on Monday Night Raw. Now, it seems as if the match particularly had a big impression on the chairman, as he made the call to change Matt Riddle's in-ring name to Riddle and pitched a more serious character for presentation purposes on Monday night, Fightful is told that Riddle was supportive of this idea. Now, Meltzer reported in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter that higher-ups didn't want people Googling Matt Riddle and finding news articles concerning the lawsuit against him and the WWE. The company made the decision to drop Matt Riddle's first name, Meltzer says, and now he's just Riddle. The story was that they wanted... People to not search Matt Riddle and have the information come up with the details of the lawsuit against him and the WWE. The decision was made 
on October 29th, and Riddle said he was fine with it and even preferred it, saying Riddle is his last name, and he's been called that for most of his life. He says this on Twitter, this Matt Riddle, people, it's going to be okay. I've been called Riddle most of my life. I actually prefer it, and it's my real last name, end quote. I, I really don't know what else to think, folks. I mean, I think we just exposed WWE for being absolutely fucking ridiculous. Not only do you look up Matt Riddle, now you're going to look up Matt Riddle and just call him Riddle. You're going to type in Riddle, WWE, and the reason for the name change is going to be right in the topic of all these articles that you find on Google. Riddle was changed. The, the, the name Matt Riddle was changed because of lawsuits. But that's the reason why WWE changed it. I mean, I I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand this. I, I don't understand these people. I don't. I don't. Someone, please. Please, somebody out there. Please explain this to me. He's going to be okay with it. I'll be okay with it when his contract comes up in 2021 and we see him in the ring with Kenny Omega on AEW television. That's when I'll be okay with it. How the fuck? Do you fuck up Matt Riddle and Keith Lee? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. And people tell me, oh, let it take its natural course. They'll be fine. Bro, you're, you're pulling top tier talent from NXT in, in which you don't even think NXT is a priority right now. You're pulling this talent to do what with? They're not even a legit brand in the eyes of Vince McMahon. They're not at the fucking Survivor Series this year. Nobody gives a fuck about NXT, but you're taking their talent. You don't have any problem taking their fucking talent, though. Meanwhile, you take someone like Matt Riddle, someone like Keith Lee, two guys that had fucking just all the upside in the world. How do you fuck these guys up? Unless you are doing it purposefully. Unless you are just taking them and just doing it on purpose to kill them for whatever reason. It's like this is game. It's like you're going out in the fucking African wild and hunting an elephant for their tusks. That's what WWE does. They go out there and hunt WWE talent in NXT and hunt independent talent to bring them on in and fucking kill their souls, kill their spirits until there's nothing left. Then they leave WWE and they don't want to do anything in pro wrestling ever again. Awful. Absolutely fucking awful, bro. This is the proper place to do. Bro, you're fucked, bro. There you go. I gave you two emotions with bro in one fucking sentence, bro. Finally, before we get the fuck out of here, man, because I got more to talk about on Sunday. I got to save my energy for Sunday. WWE is not planning. Yeah, really. They're not planning to hotshot John Cena or Goldberg into any creative plans anytime soon. Sure you're not. Sure you're not. John Cena and Goldberg's name have been brought up in the build for WrestleMania next year because WWE, Vince McMahon, wants WrestleMania to be the biggest show ever because of what happened with this year's show. He wants to make up for lost time. He wants to make up for what happened for WrestleMania 36 with the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I could see Cena at WrestleMania. I don't know what he does, but I could see him at WrestleMania. I could see him against maybe somebody. WWE title, universal title maybe. You could even put John Cena in the Roman Reigns situation. You know, have him chase that title, whatever the case may be. Goldberg, I don't know what he does at WrestleMania. I pitched the idea of Goldberg versus Lars Sullivan. That would be a great match for Lars Sullivan to go over in and use Goldberg in the proper way. Goldberg, I could see him coming back well before WrestleMania. I could actually see Goldberg versus Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble just to play off that match taking place in January because it was supposed to be scheduled at WrestleMania in April for WrestleMania 36. And WWE would be making that up because Roman walked out, as you guys know. But I could see these guys being in creative plans on the road to WrestleMania no question. Now, according to Wrestling Observer Newsletter, WWE is not, I stress this, not planning to hotshot John Cena or Goldberg into a match right now, even with Roman Reigns. Goldberg showed up in the Thunderdome to watch Reigns take on Braun Strowman. Ringside News exclusively reported that at the time, the company was not teasing any kind of Goldberg versus Reigns match. I pitched Royal Rumble. 
Because what is Reigns going to do at the Royal Rumble? Why would you willingly feed fresh talent, talent that needs to be over just as much as Reigns? Why would you feed him fresh talent when you can use somebody like Goldberg to only enhance the Roman Reigns character on his way to WrestleMania? That seems like a little bit more of a logical thing to do instead of feeding like a Rey Mysterio or Kevin Owens who needs it, a Daniel Bryan who needs it, a Big E who needs it, right? Goldberg kind of fits into that situation like a glove. Now, it was noted that Goldberg would make sense for a match against Roman Reigns, that WrestleMania 36 encounter did not happen as promoted. That doesn't play a factor in this situation, but right now, WWE is carrying on without any match in mind for either Goldberg or John Cena. Folks, listen, Goldberg is going to be in the plans at WrestleMania, whether it's against Reigns at the Royal Rumble, which I think is the best. Lars Sullivan against Goldberg at WrestleMania is perfect for Lars Sullivan if you want to build him up as the monster that I know Vince McMahon wants to build him up at as... And John Cena, I could see at WrestleMania because WWE and Vince is going to be calling upon everybody that he knows to make this the biggest show possible. Cena, Undertaker, Rousey, Becky even wants back at WrestleMania. And she's giving birth in December. She's going to need at least 12 to 16 weeks to get over what she's doing right now in her personal life. That does not mean WrestleMania. So book Becky at SummerSlam. That's just my situation there. If you guys want to go back and watch everything that I said about WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, I, I book several aspects of all these events for next year on last week's show. So make sure you guys go and check that. But Goldberg, I could see against Reigns at Royal Rumble. Goldberg, I could see against Lars Sullivan perfectly at WrestleMania. Cena, I don't know what he does. Drew McIntyre is going to need an opponent at WrestleMania. I could see that happening. On Drew McIntyre's uh, second rise to the top, maybe we could see that, you know. But as far as what they're doing now, and WWE having plans now, and I stress the word now, WWE doesn't even know what the fuck they're doing for Monday Night Raw. Never mind WrestleMania, never mind Royal Rumble, never mind John Cena or Goldberg. But if you are planning something, those are the names that they're going to have in mind first before anybody else on the active roster, because those are the guys that are going to make them money. So they might not have plans now, but that doesn't mean they're not going to have plans ever. They will have plans when the time is right. And WWE, at the end of the day, is not going to tell you exactly what's going on. You're not going to know what's going on because when it comes to WrestleMania, A, they don't know, and B, if they do know, it's being kept close to the vest because they want this show to be the biggest ever. They're not going to actively go out there and tell you what's going on. You're not going to know about John Cena or Goldberg. You're not going to hear from Cena. You're not going to hear from Goldberg. So what are you exactly, are you, are you going to try and find out here? There's nothing available because it's not available, period. I could see them being in the plans, no question. Guys, I'm getting out of here. If you enjoyed the video, let me know what you think down below. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on that bell for all notifications. And follow me on Twitter, man, at JD from NY206 on Twitter. And Instagram, mouthmasker.com slash OTS, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Go and check out all the other videos that you might have missed on the channel. We were live last night for SmackDown. How many of you guys watched that? You didn't? It's linked down below with the official playlist in the description of this video. Make sure you guys go and get your t-shirts. Bonfire.com is the exclusive home of JD from NY and off the script. And as always, guys, my great friends over at The Ridge, ridge.com slash script. Save 10% off on everything on their website. The holidays will be here before you know it, man. It makes a great gift for you and a great gift for your grandfather or your dad for the holiday season, man. Ridge.com slash script. Guys, tomorrow we will be going over everything. Monday Night Raw, AEW, NXT, and SmackDown. All the appropriate news coming out of those shows. And I got a major discussion, man. What happened? to the WWE Survivor Series, man. It was once a tradition, and now WWE simply doesn't care about tradition. We will talk about that tomorrow on a very special part two of the podcast. Don't go anywhere, man. I will be back, and this is Off the Script.